Paul by Vasco de Lobeira, translated by Robert Southey. Book Three, Chapter Fifteen. How the Knight of the Green Sword, who was now called the Greek Knight, and Don Bruneo of Bonamar, and Angriote of Estravaus, came with the fair Gracinda to the court of King Lisuarte, who had resolved to send his daughter Oriana to the Emperor of Rome to be his wife, and of what happened when they made their demand. The Knight of the Green Sword, and Don Bruneo of Bonamar, and Angriote went sailing on with Gracinda, sometimes with fair wind, sometimes with foul, as it pleased God to send it, till they came into the ocean sea, which is by the coast of Spain, and when he of the green sword saw himself so near Great Britain, he gave thanks to God that, after escaping so many perils, he was at last in sight of the land wherein his lady dwelt. Then called he the vassals, and desired that no one would call him by any other name than the Greek knight, and bade them strive to reach Great Britain. He then bade Gandalin bring him the six swords, which Queen Menoresa had given him in Constantinople. Two of them he gave to Bruneo and Angriote, who marveled at the richness of their accoutrements, and one he took himself, bidding Gandalin place his own green sword where none might see it, lest he should be known in King Lisuarte's court. This was between nuns and vespers, and Gracinda, being aweary of the sea, was led on deck, that she might be refreshed by the sight of land, and so sate talking with the three knights, when it was about sunset they saw a ship, and the Greek knight bade the sailors steer towards her, and when they were within hearing, Angriote hailed them courteously, and asked whence the ship was going, and who were in her? Answer was made. The vessel belongs to the firm islands, and two knights of the island are on board, who will tell you what you please to ask. When the Greek knight and his comrades heard this, their hearts rejoiced that they should now hear what they so much wished to hear. Friend, said Angriote, I pray you for courtesy, request your knights to come up, that we may ask news of them, and if it please you, tell us their names. That they answered we will not do but we will say what you desire presently the two knights came on deck and angriote asked them if by chance they knew where king lisuarte then was we know all concerning him they replied but first we would inquire a thing for which we have undergone great toil and will yet go through more Know you any tidings of a knight called Amadis of Gaul, in quest of whom his friends are perishing and wandering all over the world? When the Greek knight heard this, the tears ran down his cheek for pure joy to think how true his friends and kinsmen were to him, but he continued silent. Tell me who you are, said Angriote, and I will then relate to you what we know concerning him. The one answered, Know that my name is Dragonis, and this my companion is Enil, and we are going over the Mediterranean Sea to seek him in all its ports of either shore. God give you good tidings, cried Angriote. In these vessels we have mariners from sundry parts, and I will inquire among them if any one have heard of him. This said he by the Greek knight's bidding. Now tell me where King Lisuarte is at present and what you know of Queen Bucena, and of his court. Dragonis answered, He is in the town of Tagades, which is a seaport opposite to Normandy, and there he holds a court to consult with the chief men of the land, if he shall give his daughter Oriana to the Emperor of Rome, who hath demanded her in marriage. Many Romans are come to escort her, among whom are Salustanguidio, Prince of Calabria, and with them Queen Sardamira is arrived to accompany Oriana, whom El Patin already calls Empress. The heart of the Green Knight failed him, and he stood like a man dismayed. But when Dragonis came to relate the bitter lamentations which Oriana made, and how she had appealed to all the high-born men of Great Britain, then was his heart comforted, and he took courage. 
thinking that as the thing displeased her the romans could neither be so many nor so mighty but that he would rescue her from them by sea or land this would he do for the poorest damsel in the world how much more for her of whom if he had lost all hope he could not endure to live and then he gave god thanks for directing him at such a point of time to the place where he might serve his mistress and somewhat requite her for the love she bore him and win her and have her his own even as his heart desired without fault these thoughts made him full joyful and he bade angriote ask dragonis how he had learnt this news it is four days replied the knight since don quadragante arrived at the firm island which we have so lately left and with him his nephew landin and gavarte of the perilous valley and mandasil of the silver bridge and helian the haughty these five came to consult with florestan and agarayes how they should proceed in search of amadis whom we are seeking don quadragante would have sent to the court of king lisuarte to know if any among the strangers there knew aught of that excellent knight but don florestan told him that they knew no tidings of amadis there for he had been at miraflores with the princess oriana as the guard of queen sardamira all whose knights he had overthrown and then he related the manner of his combat glad was the greek knight and his companions to hear of florestan's good fortune but when he heard miraflores mentioned his heart leaped and immediately he took gandalin apart and said to him my true friend you hear how it is that if oriana be thus given to another both she and i must pass through death now i beseech you very carefully perform what i shall bid thee do you and ardian the dwarf take leave of me and of Grasinda, saying you will go in that vessel in quest of Amadis, and there tell my cousin Dragonis and Enil all the news of me, and bid them return to the firm island, and when you arrive there beseech Quadragante and Agrayes not to leave the island, for in fifteen days I will be with them, and tell them to collect all the knights, and bid Florestan and your father Gandales prepare all the shipping they can find, and store them with food and arms, for i must go with them to a place appointed which they shall know when i come be careful in all this for you know how it concerns me then he called the dwarf and said ardian go you with gandalin and do as he shall direct you they obeyed their bidding and took leave of Grasinda. and angriote said to the knights in the other vessel sirs here are a squire and a dwarf who would go in your company in quest of amadis but when dragonis and enil saw gandalin and ardian they were full joyful and the more when they heard the truth from them so they made sail for the firm island and grasinda with her company sailed on towards tagades king lisuarte was at this time in his city of tagades taking counsel with the good men of his land concerning the marriage of his daughter but they all advised him against the resolution he had taken saying he would sin against god if he dispossessed his daughter of her lawful inheritance and gave her to a stranger a man of so evil a disposition and so fickle that inasmuch as he desired her so much would he soon dislike her as is the manner of such men but the king remained firm in his intentions god permitting that his greatness and honour should be abased by that very amadis who had so greatly exalted it and so often secured his kingdom and his life this king not to change his purpose but that his obstinacy and rigour might be more manifest to all thought proper to summon to that council his uncle count argamon who was very old and gouty yet he knowing the design of the king did not wish to leave his house and advise him in vain but when the summons came for him he obeyed lisuarte met him at the palace door and led him to his seat saying good uncle i have convoked you and these good men to counsel me upon my daughter's marriage with the emperor tell me now your opinion sir replied count argamon it is a grievous thing to answer you in whatever manner i shall do it to contradict you will be to displease you as all kings are offended 
when their inclinations are opposed and to agree with you would make us guilty of falsehood and disloyalty in the sight of god and of the world the same right which you had to this kingdom on your brother's death the same and even stronger right hath your daughter oriana after you but you think by making oriana empress and inheriting leonoreta in great britain to increase the rank of both if you will look well to this you will perceive that the contrary must happen for you cannot set aside the right order of succession to these kingdoms and the emperor having your daughter oriana to wife her right will become his and with his power after you are gone he will easily win the land and thus will both your daughters be disherited and this land which is so honoured and famous in the world will become subject to the emperors of rome and oriana will have no other power therein than it shall please her husband to permit so that instead of sovereign she will herself be a subject uncle replied lisuarte i well understand what you say but i had rather you had approved of the promise which i have made to the romans for i cannot recall it the count answered it is on the terms and confirmation that that depends and then you may preserve your honour in your word and confirm or set aside as shall be best you say well replied the king and with that he broke up the assembly crescinda and her company sailed on so long that the sailors one morning saw the mountain of tagades from whence the city at its foot took its name they immediately went to Gracinda, who was talking with the knights, and said, Sirs, give us our Albricias, the reward of good tidings. For if the wind hold but one hour longer, you will be in your port. Full joyful was Gracinda, and they all went on deck to see the land which they had so desired to see and gracinda gave thanks to god who had safely guided her and with great humility besought him to prosper her enterprise and give her the honour which she desired but i tell you that when the greek knight beheld that land wherein his lady dwelt and which he had so long longed to behold he could not suppress his tears he turned his face away that gracinda might not see him weep and having recovered said to her with a cheerful countenance take good hope my lady that you shall depart from this land with the honour which you desire for seeing your beauty sure i am that our cause is right and since god is the judge that the honour will be ours also but she who seeing herself so near the trial was somewhat fearful replied i have more confidence in your prowess than in my own beauty do you remember that and do as heretofore you have done and you will make me the most joyful woman alive then they called grinfesa one of her damsels who understood a little french which king lisuarte understood also and they gave her a writing in latin to give to lisuarte and queen brisena and then return on board with their answer the damsel forthwith arrayed herself in rich attire and her father who was crescinda's steward prepared horses and palfreys which were lowered into a boat and the damsel with her two brothers who were good knights and their squires left the vessel and put to land the greek knight then bade lasindo go ashore in another boat and to the city by another road and asked if there was any news of his master don bruneo feigning that he had been left behind sick when that night went in quest of amadis under this pretext he bade him learn what answer the damsel received and return on the morrow now i tell you that when the damsel entered the town all were delighted to see her how richly she was arrayed and how well accompanied by those knights it so befell that esplandian and ambor de gandel angriote's son were going hawking and met the damsel who was inquiring the way to the palace hearing this esplandian gave his merlin to sargil and went up to her saying in french my good lady i will guide you and shew you the king if you do not know him 
the damsel marvelled at his beauty and gentle demeanour thinking that she had never beheld man nor woman so fair fair child said she whom god make as happy as he hath made handsome i thank god for such a guide her brother then gave esplandian her bridle and he led her to the palace the king was at this time out in the court under the porch talking with the roman knights and had just given them his final promise to deliver to them his daughter and they had bound themselves to receive her as their lady the damsel alighted and was led towards him by esplandian she knelt down and would have kissed his hand but that the king never permitted save only when he conferred a favour upon a damsel she gave him then the letter and said sir the queen and all her damsels must hear my bidding that if peradventure the damsel should be displeased thereat they may procure a knight to defend their cause king arban of north wales then went to brisena and brought her and her ladies so fair a company that hardly could the like be found and she seated herself by lisuarte and the damsels ranged themselves round her the damsel ambassadress kissed brisena's hand and said lady if my errand shall appear strange do not you marvel at us for your court is remarkable above all others for such things because of your worth and the king's hear this letter and grant what is requested therein the king then ordered the letter to be read which was thus to the most high and honourable lisuarte king of great britain i grasinda the lady of beauty above all the dames of romania kiss your hand and make known to you that i am come into your dominions with a greek knight and the reason of my coming is this having been judged the fairest dame of all the dames of romania so would i in pursuit of that glory which hath made my heart glad be judged fair above all the damsels in your court that having won this victory also i may rest in the happiness which i so much desire if there is any knight who will undertake the quarrel for any of your damsels he must prepare himself for two things to do battle with the greek knight and to place in the field a rich crown such as i bring that the conqueror may present both in token of victory to her for whom he hath conquered if this demand please you most noble king do you give me security for myself and my whole company and for the greek knight save only from him with whom he shall combat and if the knight who fights for the damsel shall be conquered let a second and then a third come on for he in his worth shall keep the lists against all as god shall help me quoth lisuarte the lady must be a full fair one and the knight must think not a little of himself a great fancy have they taken up which they might safely have avoided howbeit damsel tell you your mistress that she may come safely and if there be none to gainsay her her will will be satisfied sir replied the damsel you answer even as we expect for from your court none can depart with just complaint but because the greek knight brings with him two companions who require to joust they must have the same safe conduct so be it answered lisuarte in god's name then quoth she to-morrow you shall see them in your court and do you my lady said she to the queen command your damsels to be present that they may see how their honour is increased or lessened by their champion then took she leave and went her way to the ship where her tidings were joyfully heard forthwith the arms and horses were landed and one large tent and two lesser ones were pitched on shore howbeit only the steward and certain men as a guard left the ship to sleep in them that night now you must know that so soon as the damsel had departed salustanquidio the cousin of the emperor of rome rose up and with him a hundred roman knights and he spake aloud that all might hear him sir i and these good romans ask of you a boon which will be to your profit and our honour lisuarte replied i shall willingly grant whatever boon ye ask 
let us then said salustanquidio answer this defiance for the damsels we shall render them a better account than the knights of their own country can for we and the greeks know one another and the greeks will fear the name of the romans more than the deeds of those of this land don grumedan hearing this immediately rose and said sir although it be a great honour to princes that strangers come to seek adventures at their court it soon becomes a shame and a reproach if they be not discreetly received and restrained this i say because of the greek knight's challenge if his pride should be satisfied and he should conquer those who are to oppose him the danger would be theirs indeed but the shame and loss of honour yours therefore methinks sir you should wait till don galaor and your son norandel arrive who will be here within five days and by that time don guilan the pensive will be recovered enough to bear arms and these three will undertake the quarrel and thus maintain your honour and their own lisuarte replied this cannot be i have granted the boon to the romans and they are such that they could bring greater adventure to a good end that may be quoth grumedan but i will prevent the damsels from granting it and to them this matter appertains no more cried the king what i do i have done salustanquidio then kissed the king's hand and said to grumedan i shall end this battle to my own honour and to the damsels and since you don grumedan think so much of these knights and of yourself that you say they would perform the battle better than we shall if after the combat i am able to bear arms i and two companions will do combat with them and with you or if i am unable i will bring another in my stead who shall well supply my place in god's name replied old grumedan i accept the challenge for myself and for those who will bear a part with me and taking a ring from his finger he held it toward the king saying sir here is my gage for myself and those whom i shall produce with me nor can the battle be refused since they demanded it unless they confess themselves vanquished salustanquidio replied sooner shall the seas be dry than a single word of rome be unsaid unless it be to her honour if old age had bereft thee of thy senses thy body shall pay for it if thou darest risk it in the battle sir tis answered don grumedan i am not such a boy but that i have years enough but this which ye think against me is to my help for i have seen many things and one of them is that pride never comes to a good end so will it happen to you who are the captain and head of all pride king arban of north wales then rose to answer the romans and with him full thirty knights to take up the quarrel and an hundred others rose also but the king held a wand and bade them be silent and don grumedan also and count argamon then said order them to their dwelling sir all of both sides for such disputes are not to your honour the king accordingly dismissed them but the count then said what think you sir of the arrogance of these people and yet you will give your daughter to them how is it that one so wise as you will thus venture to tempt god remember how you made amadis of gaul and all his lineage forsake you for your pride and now you would commit yet another worse error therefore sir i discharge myself of my fealty and homage due to you and will go to my own lands that i may not witness the tears and wretchedness of your daughter oriana when she is delivered up for i am told that you have sent to miraflores for her uncle replied the king say no more upon this subject for what is done cannot be undone and i pray you tarry yet three days longer to see the issue of these combats of which you shall be judge with such other knights as you shall appoint because you understand the greek tongue better than any other man of my realm by reason of your long abode in greece argamon answered i will do this to please you but longer will i not tarry for i cannot endure these things 
lesindo the squire of don bruneo as the greek knight had enjoined him learnt all that passed after the departure of the damsel and returned to the ship to acquaint him and he told him also how the king had sent for oriana from miraflores to deliver her to the romans so soon as this combat was over when the greek knight heard that the romans were to fight for the damsels he was full joyful for what he most feared was that his brother galaor might be in the court and take up their cause against him in the which case either he must have died or have slain his brother for galaor was the knight who had put him in greater danger than any with whom he had done battle even though a giant therefore his heart was now at rest and the more so knowing that he was not to fight against any of his friends lady said he to grasinda let us hear mass betimes to-morrow in the tent and do you prepare yourself for by god's help we shall bring this adventure to such issue as you desire End of chapter fifteen recording by maricel qui